From high-end shops to corner store bodegas, cannabis can be found on streets across Thailand. It's a stark reversal for a country that has some of the world's harshest drug laws. Cannabis was a class 5 narcotic here. Possession could land you in jail for up to 15 years. But that changed on June 9, 2022, when Thailand became the first country in Asia to legalize weed. And it's only the third in the world behind Canada and Uruguay. Many hailed Thailand's move as progressive, especially compared to its conservative neighbors. Flash forward to election season a year later, and the country saw another stark reversal. The older ruling military junta is pushing to keep the existing marijuana laws intact. But the younger, progressive opposition wants to relist cannabis as a controlled substance. What happened and why is Thailand rethinking its status as a weed hub? Going back to the beginning, who was pushing for legislation in the first place? Pull back the curtains and you'll find this guy. Anatin Chanvirakul is the country's deputy prime minister. First, Anatin wanted to ease the strain on Thailand's overpopulated prisons. Thailand has one of the highest incarceration rates in the world. More than 80% of prisoners are there on drug-related charges. After marijuana was legalized, Thailand reportedly set free more than 4,000 inmates. But more importantly, Anatin wanted to alleviate poverty in the rural areas. He said growing marijuana would be highly profitable. But where was the marijuana destined? According to Anatin, growing weed was all in the name of medicine. Anatin is also the country's health minister. That plushie he's holding? That's Dr. Ganja. The Thai government made him a mascot in 2020 after opening the country's first medical marijuana clinic. Medical marijuana was made legal at the end of 2018. Anutin hoped legalizing marijuana more broadly would turn Thailand into a premier hub for wellness and health tourism in Asia. He once said, cannabis is like gold, something valuable and should be promoted. After all, it's a highly lucrative industry by all accounts. Dozens of countries have already legalized medical marijuana. The global industry is projected to be worth over 120 billion US dollars by 2026. What Kun Anatin did, and I think that something which may continue uh, with whatever regime ends up taking place here, is that they they brought the they brought cannabis under the traditional medicinal act, where it was considered to be a, a traditional uh, herb. Uh, and that their their aim was to bring it back in with traditional uses in Thailand. You may have heard that Thailand gave away a million cannabis plants to households, yet the government also made it clear it was not condoning recreational use. This is where it gets confusing. Even though cannabis was decriminalized, the government never ironed out the nitty-gritty details. People can grow cannabis at home, even sell it without red tape. All they had to do was notify their local government. So basically, when we uh, get the building, like where our shop is going to be located at, we just basically talk to the owner that if we can open a cannabis shop, do you have a problem with that? So basically, we just need a letter from her that she okay to have um, a cannabis shop at her building, and we took that document to uh, that that document to the Thai tradition. Thai, Thai traditional department, and you just get the license. That's it. That's pretty easy. Without regulations, the sale of cannabis for recreational use expanded rapidly throughout the country. That means that even if you have no medical reason for lighting up, you most likely won't be prosecuted for doing so. A bill known as the Cannabis and Hemp Act sought to regulate how much weed an individual could grow and who could sell it. But that bill languished as lawmakers could not reach a compromise even by the time Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha dissolved parliament in early 2023. That left the industry in limbo. So, why the rush? I understand that Pum uh, Thai Party is uh, trying to negotiate with all protocols parties to support passage to the law as the strategy for uh, protocol campaigning. To give him some credit, he pushed this through. He did what was necessary. To, to push through his campaign promise. And uh, I guess he, he used the legal means in front of him 
at its disposal to, to do that uh, by circumventing the actual legislative process and using the, the controls he had as Minister of Health to delist it as a narcotic. When weed was legalized, it seemingly opened the floodgate. Suddenly, Thailand was a stoner's paradise. Entrepreneurs were looking to hit the big time. Enthusiasts were just looking to hit it big. But for all the highs, there were widespread grumblings about the lows. Remember how a vast majority of Thailand's prisoners are jailed on drug-related charges? The country remains a key regional transit hub for drugs and a narcotics producer. The ruling Bumjai Thai Party blames corrupt officials for the flood of illegal imports. But the rise in smuggling has created unfair competition that's left local farmers high and dry. One cannabis shop owner said prices could go as low as 80 baht a joint. Illegal marijuana has come in different way. Sometimes it's come with people who are about to visit Thailand. So basically they are tourist people and they already know that you know, uh, in Thailand is already legalization of cannabis. So what they want is just text us on WhatsApp if we want any weed in this kind of price. That easy. No, no tax paying or no import tax or anything. It's very cheap. So that was the moment I realized, oh, this is not not a good thing. You know what I mean? Because uh, comparing to Thai grow cannabis, which they grow in Thailand indoor with AC. The price it shouldn't be this cheap, for, for sure. That's not to say that there aren't any regulations on cannabis. Smoking in public could still lead to prison and fines under public nuisance laws. Also, a week after weed was legalized, Anutian moved to ban cannabis for those under 20, pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers. That was over reports that young people were being hospitalized. Among them, a 15-year-old male who, after smoking two joints, reportedly became hysterical and tried to stab people with a knife. For many, those stories only solidified generations-old perceptions of drug use. So when we talk about ganja, the next thing the thing of is other drug, the thing of heroin, the thing of meth, the thing of other drug, which the thing is could be related to each other. They are still think that um, ganja is like, a gateway drug in, in their perception and that's how their uh, kind of misconception a bit for my, in, in my opinion. With election season looming just beyond the end of 2022, many opposition parties started campaigning to roll back the liberalization of weed. Anutin, meanwhile, urged voters to support the ruling party to keep the drug from being recriminalized. Unfortunately for him, the tide turned in favor of the opposition. Anatin's new platform, promising to dial down his biggest achievement by introducing laws that will better regulate the sale and use of cannabis. But what a reversal would look like has also been the subject of much debate. You have to remember that in the first month after decriminalization, when the government opened up the licensing process, close to 1.4 million people registered for a license to grow cannabis. There's a significant percentage of the population that in one way or, or another has economic links to the plant. And they will, they will, they can't be ignored. I, I doubt any responsible government will ignore them. Uh, Mr. Pita Lim Jalalat, the, uh, the, the candidate for the, the Prime Minister, he tried to like a uh, negotiate to like a, uh, to the businessman zoning the area, maybe in Phuket, or Chiang Mai, but we have to like uh, making a like, referendum to ask to the uh, community, to the, to the local area, the people will accept or not. Thailand remains a unicorn in a region averse to drugs. In places like Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Singapore, possession carries a possible punishment of a life sentence or even death. Others like South Korea, Japan, and Malaysia are still making strides towards legalizing medical cannabis. It's just a question of whether they will make a model or a cautionary tale out of Thailand.